Good day, AJ here at Keytron USA, and welcome to this short tutorial on using the MidJ Pro as a playback machine or for playing back your backing tracks. As a matter of fact, I would like to stay away from that terminology backing tracks because in this scenario, it's not just a playback machine for backing tracks, but it actually enhances the tracks as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But in this case, we're going to do one demonstration. We have a customer of ours who uh, gave us some stuff on a USB stick, some MIDI files, and he would like to hear how these sound on the MIDI J Pro. Now, this goes out to any one of you out there. You can submit us your MIDI files, and we will play them back on the MIDI J Pro and send them back to you as audio files so you can hear exactly how your stuff is going to sound like on the MIDI J Pro. And this is a very useful um, idea, especially for those of you who may not be able to get your hands on one of these machines. So let's uh, see how we do this. We just turned it on right now. As you can see, these are the folders in the hard drive. And this particular keyboard, oh, sorry, this particular module has the Ajan Sonic uh, upgrade kit installed. So if I go to the media button, I can see the actual MidJ uh, solid state drive and the 500 gigabyte uh, storage drive uh, with the uh, AJAM Sonic label on there. So depending on which drive you want to work on, you pretty much select that drive and then all your functions and controls are actually working with regards to that particular drive. So in this case, I selected the AJAM Sonic drive for an example. I can go in, turn the wheel down or just select MIDI file. Okay. And when I go there and touch MIDI file, the first time is a selection. Second time is an actual uh, uh, double selection or double click get into the machine itself go into media file and it's going to display a whole bunch of things that are in there for you if you want to play them they're all in uh, different groups in different categories so let's say for example i went to tune 1000 and i actually can see a bunch of all these uh, files that are in there all arranged in different categories and according to artists according to time of the year as well songs from the 40s 50s 60s 70s let's just go into willie nelson press enter and uh, displays all the songs in there. You can see how easy it is to use. Carolina, in my mind, hit enter and displays the lyrics on the screen. Now, while that's playing, I can explain some functions. Okay, so I can go into, for example, into the function and you can select how many files you want to split on the line. You can even select the different. Uh, ways that you want the, uh, the files should be dis to be displayed, either folders or uh, files first, or folders next. But let's get out of here for a second first and talk about the uh, lyrics. In this particular is lyrics on and off. I can always watch my lyrics with this button over here, turning it on or off. Okay. Now, in this mode, I have a button here, karaoke, which allows me to actually control various aspects of it. If I go into karaoke, I have different colors, fonts, zoom, I can zoom in, make the font bigger, or I can zoom out, make the font smaller, smaller, and smaller. Okay, also the position of this font, center or far left, depends on you. Now, very interesting here, color. I can go into the color, for example, I can set different backgrounds. And now, these backgrounds actually work when you have an external monitor connected to it. So if I select this, for example, and I look at what it's doing on the monitor, Another color, okay? You can see exactly what's going on in the monitor. So, all these settings over here are supposed to be able to help you um, for your audience as well when you're projecting onto an external TV monitor. Now, I can also go in here with a font. Now, I can change the different font types again, different backing color, and different uh, fonts. Again, these are all seen very clearly on the monitor. stop and get back to our other screen now what are we going to see in this screen I'm going to go back again and uh, revisit the uh, reason why we're here this evening again a customer of ours gave us a USB stick
on the side of the Mid J Pro, right there, you have three USB slots and an SD card as well. So I'm going to load that USB stick. Remember, in the beginning of this brief tutorial, we mentioned the fact that the media button was what was telling you where the device is pointing to. And right now, it's pointing to the uh, HM Sonic uh, solid state disk. So I'm going to press the media button again. And you can see now we have the USB stick, which is where the files that we just put in reside. So real quick, I'm going to touch the USB and you can see we have some folders in there. Uh, the customer's name is over there. We're going to go into his folder, hit enter, and we have the MIDI and audio folder. So I'm going to go into the MIDI file and he actually gave us these uh, five songs. Um, and the idea was, well, how are these going to sound like coming out of the MIDI J Pro? Well, let's give it a listen. And also very easy to use. Go down, either touch the file, and right there. While the song is playing, I can instantly go into the lyrics, go to the next one, which you want to want to hear, my best friend, the lock charm, and hit enter, and instantly, it starts playing the song. Now there's a function on here called crossfade, what that allows me to do is I can hit the crossfade button or feature, and when I pick a song, it'll crossfade from the first to the second. never a silent period. Talk about some of these features in this machine. Okay, we can actually work on these uh, MIDI files and enhance them in some way. So we have a drum set button. Okay, if you don't like the drum set that the file chose for you, I'm going to drum set. I can pick a different drum set. into the mixer okay hit that real quick and that's my drum kit all right i can mute the different parts i can mute the kick for example there goes the kick or i can adjust the volume of the kick if i want the kick to be a little bit louder or lower i can do it right there instantly at the touch of a button with 15 being the max and that's the reverb level so all the instruments are there that make up the drum kit these are the drum kits and these are the uh percussion parts for example now we get back out of here with exits very simple, pretty simple. I can even add up. That's your drumming right there in front of you. Now I can also go into the GM file, okay? GM part, which is over there. Hit the GM part. And this takes me to all the 16 tracks that are playing. In this case, the first um, 12 tracks are playing harmonica. I can solo the instrument. It's solo, for an example. And I want to hear just the harmonica. There's an S right there. Okay. Solo drums. S tells you exactly what's been soloed. Everything else is mute, has been muted, and you can only hear the drums playing. Bring it back in again. Very easy to use. And I can change the instrument as well. So for example, with the guitar over there, I can actually go in, touch that. Okay, pick up the solo, go the guitar, and it tells me what, what instrument is in that track. And I can change the instrument. If I pick another guitar, for example, still guitar. Okay, you can hear that yourself. Make it a string. Who has? You hear that right now? Exit. 
it. That's me voice. And the important things you can do there, change the volume of that particular track. And guess what? If you like the new arrangement the way it was right now, you simply hit the save button and it's going to tell you to save this as uh, a new MIDI file. If you keep the same name, it will overwrite the old one. Now, you see initial and you see global. Some MIDI files have program changes within the tracks. In, in that case, if you want the program change you've done right now to impact the entire track, you would choose initial, okay? Sorry, global, you would choose global. If you want the program change you've just done right now to only impact the part where the change was done, then you would change, you would uh, click on the initial. Override existing file, yes or no? If you hit no, it's going to give you the option to give it another name. So I can just put a 1 there for an example, 4 Country Roads 1. Hit enter and my new version of 4 Country Roads will have all the edits that I've done to it. Be it with the drums or with the bass or with the volumes or with the different effects. And that's a very, very simple way to make the modifications on your MIDI file. Let's go with this one so we can actually hear how this is going to sound on the MIDI program. Real time here on the bottom. I can take out the drums. Okay. Take out the bass. Very, very simple as they're playing. Take out all the different parts. That's the lead right there. So the mid J pretty much has an idea of where your lead voices are. I can take out the lead either with a slider or you could hit the lead mute. And the lead mute, what it does is, it instantly takes out the lead part. So if you're playing a guitar, or an accordion, or any of those musical instruments, the mid tempo, you can now be the one who plays the lead. Half screen function, I can have the lyrics appear on half of the screen, and I can still keep a track, keep it, uh, keep my eyes on my folder, my songs, and make my selection. This is very nice when you're playing live, for example, and you still have your lyrics on the monitor. So this is what your audience is going to be seeing. Okay. Meanwhile, this is what you are going to be seeing. The split screen mode. Very smart. So that gave you an idea of what uh, the MidJ Pro sounded like with those uh, MIDI files. Stay tuned for more, more, and more tutorials from Ajan Sonic, Keytron USA.